Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Hope you guys are having an awesome, wonderful day. Hopefully it's more sun and more sunshine than this. Right now it's kind of raining or just got done raining here. But welcome back to the Sleeper Suron back up and running. I am so excited. It's been a while, but it's finally here. And this time we have a much beefier slash chonkier hub to go with it, but with a 72 volt battery. So this is now a 3000 watt, which now I only have one free wheel gear train on this and not a nine wheel like I thought I was going to put it back on but being that um, the nine wheel or the the nine gear free wheel would have been too much on this hub as far as the depth is concerned so I just stuck with the single gear train here seems simple enough I mean you're honestly going to be making more use out of this than this at any given point so this is just maybe good for like starting out and then getting yourself into it but I will say the major pain in the butt I have discovered so far since yesterday I assembled it is how much power and torque this thing delivers on the spot. Even if you're just super careful and like nudging the throttle just slightly, like I'm actually having more issues with it right now, but I'll get to that part here in a second. But I just wanted to like indulge in the moment that I never thought this thing would be back up. Although I knew it was going to be back up. I don't know if you guys knew it was going to be back up, but here it is right in front of you guys. So yeah, I'm very excited. And yes, we're back to the uh, messy controller on the thing again, but that's just the price us do-it-yourself e-bikers and other related builders have to put up with when it comes to uh, dealing with external assets. On this side here, um, I may opt for a longer cable because I don't like on how much of a stretch that is, and I like to have this kind of like more up here. As you may have seen on my previous builds, I've had like my cords wrapped up in here and stuff, but this is on a, on a very short leash, unfortunately. And surprisingly enough, I'm still dealing with an SW900 controller. I'm not sure if these are the new standards or stuff because the controller or the screen advertised in this package, which by the way, shout out to Motorized Nation e-bikes. They're the only company I know that actually sells 3000 watt kits apart from purchasing them on eBay, which I'm very sketchy about because you may get what you want, but will it be brand spanking new like this kit coming from motorized nation would be or would it be more of a hit or miss on ebay than purchasing it from a company that's brand new out of the box because that's what this kit and all the everything and all the accessories that it comes with is actually about it's brand spanking new right out of the box whereas ebay might be a hit or miss they advertise it as new but i just wasn't willing to uh, you know go that direction so here i am it surprised me one out of very few retailers who actually carry a kit unless you upgrade to a fat tire e-bike which otherwise on amazon that's all you're going to be looking for the highest i believe you can go is maybe 2000 and then uh, anything more than that you're going to be stepping into the fat bike territory so to go into more details about the kit it is 3000 watts but the more specific detail is the fact that it has 150 freaking i don't know if the terminology is nanometers or uh yeah I kind of lost tra uh, train of thought on that. So it's got 150 nanometers of torque, which according to in practice is a lot of freaking torque to deal with. And it's even more slightly concerning because even if I, you know, I had to, this is the crazy part. I have to be super careful about how much I give power to the throttle into this thing because now we're going into the con part, which is making me more of a worried rider than someone who can enjoy this ride for what it is. I'm going to have to fortify this in a way that this base setup will not do in the future because this part has made me the most concerned and to be the most weary about what's going on rides. Like right, like right now, it was just a goal to get down to this place from where I live and I live on a steep hill and basically I had to trust only using this to get here with using just a tiny bit of the throttle and the power to get myself down here and this is the kind of kit unlike the 2000 watt that isn't about no come on you, you know you you know you can achieve 60 this thing will push you to 60 and I weigh about 225 now and this thing has no problem pushing me and it's not even teasing me be like, you know, 60 kilometers, you know, you know, you want it. No, this thing will push you to 60, uh, 60 kilometers or 45 miles per hour, whether if you wait a lot or not. But also the weight of the rider is also the cause of why this is going to come undone. Otherwise, this definitely has the potential 
to tear the back end of a bike completely apart. That or at least shred this part here completely bold as to where you'll need a new dropout, which I might actually need a new dropout anyway because this thing is slightly tearing, uh, believe it or not. But uh, this here is actually keeping this intact because there's a little tear around this ring that's preventing this thing from being torn apart which means I would not be able to pedal and because I had to be specific on a Norco build I had to order a specific dropout unfortunately and they're just not oh you just one size fits all type of deal and they're quite costly so I'm trying to be as cautious as I can luckily this little setup here is keeping this all together intact and because right now it's contributing to the derailleur arm to uh, be kind of like more curved out this way than it is going straight and there's nothing worse than trying to enjoy yourself and be worry free than to be always worrying about this thing falling out and, and ruining your riding time. Because as uh, enthusiastic about this as I like to be, this is my number one concern. And it sucks because I just wanted to get on this and enjoy my ride. Which I was doing for the most part yesterday. But also even the, uh, the torque washer here which comes with a torque car which I have on the other side. That's not even keeping this, like it's basically drilling a hole through the torque washer. Then the torque washer is supposed to keep this from rotating. To go a little more further in depth on that, I'll have to pull this bike out. Because this is what I was trying to assemble as my goal to get down here was without this thing fumbling. So right here, you'll notice, I <laughs> this is kind of a tacky way to set up a torque arm. But because my torque arm will not reach and my frame is too thick, there is this little groove of my frame that this torque arm sits in. It's supposed to stop the axle port here, or the nipple, from rotating, I believe it's backwards too much? From rotating backwards, and because of the force that this thing gives, it's still not enough force to keep this from rotating backwards. And this is what I want to help you guys be aware about when you order this kind of kit. It's what to look out for, or if you guys are already aware that I'm just an idiot who doesn't already know this already and you guys are smarter than I am, which I hope is the case because I'm just still learning this as I go. Because I've never had a kit this powerful before. So this is a shout out to those who are oblivious and I'm just now discovering this and I hope it won't be too late before I actually get a fix to where I can enjoy it and be worry free. Because there's nothing worse than going on a ride and worrying about all this all the time. So let's move on. So now ultimately for the next plan, I want to be able to do burnouts and possibly wheelies. It's completely off the table. It's like owning yourself one of those wee pet scooters. You're there to enjoy it for the ride and not for the trickery. And this is almost on the same plane. So until I get that uh, more secure, tricks for this bike are pretty much strictly off the table until then. Because this thing will definitely do wheelies. I mean, every time I accelerate, <laughs> it causes my bike to want to lift up to the point where if I knew how to balance myself and learn a discipline between using the rear brake, which obviously I would have to reconfigure that because obviously this is my rear brake and usually it's best to have the rear brake on this side so that way you can balance yourself when wheeling. I don't even know why I'm explaining that. Anyway, so that's my plans for this bike, but until I get this more secure, no tricks, no, uh, no tricks of any kind planned for this bike until it gets secured. Now another interesting thing I wanted to discuss is what my plans for my other bikes are in terms of usability. And I'll say this much, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna differ from that. Actually, both are gonna be used quite fairly well just because I could see something wrong happening this, uh, to this if I don't get that thing fixed up really soon that it may lead to me riding the olive green or the mid-drive more until I feel confident enough that it's fully underway and constructed. Otherwise, I will likely be forced to use my scooter or my other bike in, in the meantime. And I just got this back up, but knowing with the, with the amount of power and torque I'm dealing with, it's going to be a necessity to make sure this bike is properly fit for the road and not just partially or thinking that, oh, this is going to work and, you know, the bolts and stuff are going to be just okay. No, this has to be 110%. So yes, the other bike is going to be well in use. I could actually, I've already got many plans I don't feel like I need to elaborate on as to what the usage is going to be, but this bike I know is going to spell trouble soon. So that's all the more reason why using the other equipment and other bikes is still going to be very much relevant to my future and its future than just being a sidekick or on the sideline. So that's my plans for that. Nothing's changed. 
things are just going to roll as they normally do. But today surprisingly happens to be sunshine days. I'm going to go check that out. It looks like the rain has actually held back ever since I uh, take it off. It actually was just pouring a little bit before I took off. But now it seems to be a little bit more tame. And it seems like the rainy clouds are passing us by. So without further ado, let's go ch uh, check out Vernon sunshine days and see what's going on. Alright guys, so as we're on our way, this is the part I have to really express my and stress my concern about this bike about is just giving it that amount of pressure is enough to even concern me more. Yeah, see it right there. See, I'm, I'm trying to find the sweet spot on this throttle here as to how much I need to give before this thing really takes off. And it's really hard to find because it just starts off so punchy and it makes me worry all the more. I'll try and treat myself to a worry-free part, but um, I see the traffic is very busy, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and just let them have the right away for the most part. It looks like everyone's going left, so that means I got a clear roadway to go straight. So the fact that this bike is definitely roadworthy, but in the bike lane is completely a true fact. So yeah, there we go. Oh uh, yeah, there's the uh, VFR, Vernon Fire Rescue. Oh wow, that is a lot of attention. <sighs> There is a video I have seen and researched on that people were looking for a video to see how the top speed of a 3000 watt kit can go. Well, I'm happy to provide for you guys a little demonstration of that. The only problem is to try to find an area big enough for me to actually test this on without there being many traffic lights and traffic in particular because this day is very busy. But uh, here's a little slight demonstration for you. So we're doing 50 kilometers right now, which is about 30, 35 miles per hour. But I do know a video like this could be very important to those who are trying to determine the right kit for their bike, if they want to go the fastest or they just want to keep between fast and slow. It's all right, but I have seen a video where people have uh, not properly demonstrated this and they've um, always had a camera off to like the road and stuff and not really truly demonstrating on their controller what a 3000 watt speed feels like although i will not be able to max out the speed because there's not enough room for that but the amount of workload that my green bike made me do that this bike would completely take away so therefore you don't have to hear me breathing as much or heavy breathing but uh yeah, this thing completely takes that away, fortunately. I am still pedaling, mind you, just because in areas where I had to figure out the sweet spot of, you know, when this acceleration pops in, I can't really test the full speed out unless I'm actually on the main highway, which is between 97 and 27th. So, yeah, I'll try to do the best I can in certain areas, but for right now, I have to take it really easy. But uh, come time, I will do a more... Uh, thorough video about that just because I know how important it can be for people who are looking to invest into a conversion kit if they want to go their fastest on their budget because that's what this kit is it's fast on the budget that's why I call it a sleeper serum <laughs> so you know what for this purpose I'm actually going to turn my kit off just so that I can like not <laughs> expect any like sudden you know, jolts or I might end up like throttling too much and this thing just freaking goes for a wheelie on its own. But I am going to get some shots of that. I just have to go somewhere where people can't really see me. So I prepare for some aerial shots at any given moment.
All right, guys. Well, I believe that's going to do it for this recording. It's a bit raining, so it kind of makes doing this a little bit difficult. It's obviously not sunshine festival it's more like rain festival but either way hope you guys enjoyed whatever footage i was able to get of the rain uh, rain festival but i'm going to take this baby home now because uh i want to actually get the proper material to uh fix the back end up so that way i don't have to worry about uh the thing uh, the axle coming out of the dropout so much and that's where i'm going to bring the second bike out because it's more safer maybe a bit drive it still goes fast but I just got this thing built yesterday and I know what it's like to be without it for days, weeks, and months. So to actually reduce the amount of damage I do to the bike, I'm just going to take it home, bring out a safer bike until I get the materials. Although I don't, I won't be recording my adventures going up there because my batteries on my GoPro is almost dead. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave any feedback if you wish, um, good or bad, it doesn't matter. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, wherever you're watching me from. Feel free to hit that subscribe button with that post notification bell. Feel free to give it a like or a dislike, whichever you feel the video deserves. And I will catch you guys on my next video, hopefully with more of this in it. So until next time, have yourselves a great day. Peace out. I trust when I'm down to my last sin. They want to see me bleed. It's free house, and I'm a represent. Heavenly Father, hear my cry. It's dollar. Life.